kind of stressful like very very stressful so before we talk about that extremely stressful game here's a reminder that there is good in the world may i present to you me with a quick word about the chevrolet good deeds cup it's that time of year again time for the chevrolet good deeds cup of course hockey's my favorite sport C can you tell is it obvious so when it comes to hockey the more the merrier chevrolet's goal is to make hockey the most inclusive it's ever been here's how you can help we need minor hockey teams from all across canada to encourage everyone of all backgrounds and abilities to play the great game of hockey it's simple gather your minor hockey team together do a good deed and submit a video for your chance to win one hundred thousand dollars for the charity of your choice. Visit ChevroletGoodDeedsCup.ca for more info and good luck. Thanks, me. I feel better. Now, let's talk about that game and feel... well, probably the opposite. Um, no victory puppies this time. Iggy is asleep upstairs. Or at least, he's trying to. Anyway, let's have some fun. Leafs win 5-4 over the Chicago Blackhawks. It... it just... it just shouldn't be that hard. It just shouldn't be that hard! It's a 4-1 lead! 4-1! 4-1! See how many more fingers that was? Wow! Oh, it's a lot of fingers and not very many! Uh, uh, how am I able to rattle these off? How, how am I? Hmm? All right, you pay attention. We're going down this path because it's important. Leafs blow a 4-1 lead to Boston. Or to, no, no, shut up! The Leafs blow a 4-1 lead to Boston in Game 7 in 2013. They were the first team to ever blow a three-goal lead in the third period of a Game 7. And we thought they will never do this again. And a bunch of people said, James Reimer is a bum. And then the very next year with Jonathan Bernier and they blew a 4-1 lead and lost to the Penguins! Centennial Classic. Did you like that game? Was that fun? You remember that Austin Matthews won it in overtime. He probably got the jersey because it was really cool. They blew a 4 one lead in that game! They blew a 4-1 lead with seconds to go and had to win it in overtime. A security guard swore at me because seconds before I said that the Leafs would hold the lead. And later you can call me a jinx, but do you know what team you work for? But it's okay because then, the next year, the home opener, they play the Rangers and they are stopping them. 5-1. Five, 5? That's even more fingers than 4! And 5 is way more fingers than 1! And in that home opener, in their own building, they blew it! They blew an entire 5-1 lead! They ended up winning 8-5. How? 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 Do you see my heart? Do you see Leaf fans' heart? See Leaf fans acting out on hockey Twitter and you're like, oh man, what a bunch of weirdos. Do you understand they blew a four goal lead in their home opener at one by three? That's using a billion dollar sports franchise to gaslight 20,000 people live in person all at once. The other night they beat Columbus. They had a 5-1 lead and almost blew it. They won 5-4. And if you go by Fast and Furious rules, you could argue that the Blue Jackets didn't almost have them. But we know they did, Vin. Sorry, dumb. And then in this game, on home ice, days into December, after the best November in franchise history. They blow a 4-1 lead on Hockey Night in Canada! And blame Mrazic. People, Mrazic, 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 and hey, hey, he allowed the first shot of the game and I was nervous. And then he stopped like the next 25 and a bunch of them were wild! The Leafs had a 4-1 lead on the Chicago Blackhawks despite only having 14 shots on goal. We do not get to complain about the Leafs goaltending in this one. And if you think this is overreacting, if you think this is an unreasonable reaction because the Leafs won this game, two points is two points, Steven. It's December, Steven. They can't win a playoff series in December, Steven. Steven? Hmm? Who the heck do you think you're talking to? Steven? Steven? It is pronounced Kyle. Kyle. This is Kyle Dubas. Drew, can you put it? There he is. There he is, right there. It's Kyle Dubas. You can tell it's him behind the mask. That is him after David Kampf scored the go-ahead goal with 80 seconds to go in the game. Steve, you're being too pessimistic. Hmm. That's Kyle Thomas! And I got news for you. He's right. That fa he didn't say anything. That's right. He's right. 
He said it with his chest, despite saying nothing, he's right. Which means I'm right, by the way, and you can deal with that. I have a headache! I, I have an actual headache. My doctor, my medical doctor, knows I make these videos and they still haven't told me to stop. This is my 15th season. 15th season? They're gonna donate my body to science! They're gonna be doing experiments on me! Judging by the nodules on the patient's vocal cords, was this man the screamer in Alexis on Fire? Uh, actually, he cheered for the Leafs. Oh, oh. Come on! <clears throat> Let's talk about the game. All right, listen. Last game, Leafs lose to the Tampa Bay Lightning, and for the most part, it was an entertaining game. But what I say last video, hmm? If you don't know, you should go back and watch it, and just watch a guy be right for a how long is that video? I was right the whole time because last game was game 28 out of 82. This was 29. It was 28 out of 82. Leafs were 34% of the way through the season, just over a third of the way through the season, and I came away with two takeaways. One, the team is really, really good. Two, they're not good enough. In the first round, they're gonna have to play one of the Panthers or the Lightning. The first round. They were sixth in the NHL heading into tonight, third in the division. You're hilarious! Hilarious! Ha <laughs> ha! Well, I bet Joe Thornton's on one of the team. Oh, he is! So we'll file that under future trauma! And I don't know how you can watch this game against the Chicago Blackhawks and not come away with the exact same conclusion. Listen. Morazic, first NHL game in 42 days. He allows the first shot that he faces. It's not great. Okay, to be expected. Unfortunate, but not totally shocking. And who scored the goal? Oh, it was Jonathan Taves. He's pretty good. He's not. That was Taves' second goal of the season. O okay, did he just st 27 games? Minus 13? What? All right, um, less forgiving of that goal, hmm? But it was also on an odd man rush. Two minutes into a game, the Leafs start game so bad. Please stop. Please stop! But it's okay, one minute and one second later, the Leafs are already on the power play. That's great. John Tavares scores with a regular old shot. And I mean, it's a good shot, but both captains score against, well, a goalie matchup that you wouldn't really expect to see on Hockey Night in Canada. Peter Mrazek in his third game of the season versus Kevin Lankinen. Hockey Night in Canada, the biggest stage, and Jack Campbell and Marc-Andre Fleury, who just won his 500th game with a shutout. Neither of them playing. So it's tied. Then later, John Tavares, once again, goes behind the Blackhawks net with the puck. Two Blackhawks follow him. Don't know why. William Nylander is basically alone in front because Kirby Doc cannot be bothered to do anything. Don't know why. John Tavares hits William Nylander with a pass. I know why, because Willie scores! And five minutes later before the period is over, the Leafs on the power play again. Naughty Blackhawks, you don't do that. Leafs on the power play, they're pretty good on the power play. Kasha finding Austin Matthews after a flurry in front, but not Mark andre because he was on the bench. And Austin Matthews again with his 18th of the season. The Leafs head into first intermission up 3-1. What could possibly go wrong? The answer is surely nothing. Early in the second period, holy smokes with the simple shot Pierre Engvall getting his fourth of the season. What could go wrong? It's 4-1, surely nothing! Oh, Clifford, by the way, getting an assist on that and with his first NHL point, Alex Steves. You know what I hate? They probably gave that puck to Alex Steves. It's his first NHL point. And years later, he's gonna tell the story of that puck and that story should end with and it was the game winner. Or no, it should be, this was the second insurance marker and we won by three. No, no, no. Like I mentioned earlier, the Leafs four goals on 14 shots and then they essentially just, just stop shooting. They just stop shooting. The Blackhawks don't. The Blackhawks shoot a whole big bunch. And this was beyond score effects. This was Peter Morazic standing on his head. He was alone. Utterly alone. Now, if you were watching Watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle on the Sportsnet YouTube channel, I think what I said, because I was focusing on the moment the goal was scored, I was like, oh, Mrazek was screened. Sometimes the DNA, the anatomy of a goal, has to do with the moments before, not the moment the puck was shot. What is this? What is this in front of the net? There's Kampf, Muzzin, and Hall. Like, generally speaking, those guys do a good job in front of the net. This is the Leafs just coming off a penalty kill. The penalty kill generally did a good job. It was five on five where the Leafs struggled. What is this? Who do you have? Any, you guys got guys? A couple seconds later, they spread out a bit. And again, I'm, I'm just gonna ask you, who's got who? Who is, what is, no! And then the moment
moment the shot goes in. Okay, so no one has no one. Good, good, good. All right, but it's okay. You still get a two-goal lead. And you're heading into the third period. 4-2 lead heading into the third period. Literally a multi-goal lead heading into the third period against one of the worst teams in the National Hockey League. You should have this! And it's not even a matter of holding down the fort. One of the things the Leafs have done so well this year is keep their foot on the gas. You have a goalie on the other team wearing the other team's jersey who cannot stop pucks this evening. Cannot! Shoot it! Less than two minutes into the third, Christians Rubens was not exactly in Sheldon Keefe's good books. Here he is in a foot race and he is winning. Here he is later in that foot race and he is losing. Justin, where are you going? Look at, look at this! No! 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 But it's Mrazek's fault. No! No! This should, there shouldn't be a video session at the Leafs next, like, whatever meeting they have. It should just be this still with a bunch of question marks on it. It should be Sheldon Keefe staring at it silently until someone says something. No! No! All right, all right. One goal lead, third period, at home, against one of the worst teams in the NHL gonna be fine. And dude, at least the rookie Leafs at the Centennial Classic had the decency to cough up the lead in the final seconds. These guys blow it with half a period to play! Jake McCabe throws it on, and this is what Peter Morazic has to contend with, and here, here is the big problem, the very big problem. So last game, I didn't get specific. Last game, I was talking about the Leafs' top four not stacking up to the likes of the Tampa Bay Lightning, the likes of the Florida Panthers, a lot of people are on Justin Hall right now. But that's not specific. Why are the Leafs not as good defensively as those teams on paper and on the ice? Why is Justin Hall not playing well? Well, Justin Hall isn't on the ice for this one. Here's what's concerning. Everyone knows the game plan against the Leafs. The Blackhawks know and the Montreal Canadiens knew. This is what every team does when they get down one goal, two goals, three to the Toronto Maple Leafs, literally work the puck to the point and go to the net. Just go to the net. They're not gonna move you. They can't. They don't know how. This is Riley Brody. The, the Leafs don't have any pair of individuals who do this. They don't. And that's something I noticed with the Leafs is that the forwards are often late getting to the point, which would be okay because they're like supporting the half wall and everything. It would be okay if the Leafs were a good net front team in front of their own net and they're not. So now the game's bloody tied and we all know how it ends since we've been doing screenshots. If you're a goaltender, turn the goal! David Kemp, revenge game, 2.0! take the lead with 80 seconds to go and I refer to Kyle. This is Kyle. No one, do you understand no one has more faith in the Toronto Maple Leafs than this person? This individual who reacted this way when the Leafs got a lead at home with 80 seconds to go. No one has more faith in them. He, he gave him the money, gave him the contracts this summer. He basically put his job on the line by saying, I believe in this group. No one believes in this group more than that guy who looks like that currently. Just for the next time anyone thinks I or anybody else is being harsh on the Leafs. Why can't we just believe in the Leafs? In the Leafs? Hmm? Anyway, so they win. <laughs> they win. Mrazic uh, should be proud of that win. I don't care. I don't care. He's a wild goalie. He's squirrely as heck. Made a bunch of big saves. Offense is great. Well, who scored? You know? Yeah, Engvall and Kampf got a funny one. Tavares, early. Willie, early. Matthews, early. Big guys getting it done. Holy smokes, that backhand. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. They cannot be Sandine and Dermot injuries away from being one of the worst defensive teams in the league. They... They need to figure this out something really fast. Questions. From Luke Fox, the Maple Leafs have yet to take a lead into the third period and lose a game this season with a popcorn emoji. Why is there no vein popping out of my neck emoji? Mario Tirabasi, you're welcome for David Kempf. I know it's not a question, but you're welcome. Thanks, man. Love him. I actually do love him. He's... I had no idea what the Leafs were doing when they signed this player. I'm like, he had one goal last year. And you're telling me he's a defensive specialist, he better be. Well, he is. And he's scoring. 
It's pretty cool. Uh, here's a quote. Too many chances against. Too many freebies. Too many guys getting behind us. I, I'm so sick of pessimistic Leaf fans. Oh, that's the coach? Uh-oh. The way the Leafs talk about the Leafs versus where the Leafs are in the standings is the Leafs in a nutshell. Wow. The Leafs look off their game, like they've lost their jump. Are they physically tired? Mentally tired? Both? What gives? Listen, physically tired? I wouldn't be surprised. They've played 29 games. They're up there. They're up there in terms of the league. Um, mentally tired? I don't know. Aren't we all? It's that time of year. The weather's miserable. The holidays are near, but like they're not near enough. Just, I don't know, everything's wet. Like everything's wet and like it's always wet and it's cold and wet. It's not cold enough to do any of the fun cold things. It's not warm enough for anything worth doing. Oh, and they're professional hockey players and they get like, you know, beaten up every second day and that's if they win. But can I throw this out there and no one wants to give them credit. The Leafs power play is clicking right now and people are like, see, it's better without Marner. You've been watching the team not on the power play without Marner? Is, is it better? I know my answer. No! Listen, I'm, I'm, we know what happened last spring. We do. He's good. He's really good. And he was playing his best hockey when he got hurt. I don't think, don't think that this, he's very good. And it hurts when your very good players are not in the lineup. And I, it shouldn't need to be said. If you're a goaltender, especially in the other guy's building, what should you do, Steve? Ten the How's the blood pressure? Believe it or not, it's like shockingly normal. Shocking. So, <clears throat> for now, oh my god, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. <laughs> the Leafs won that game. Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, go Leafs, go.